Hello everybody and welcome back and today we are discussing probably the first big book metaphorically and literally of 2022 it is the much anticipated Hanya Yanagihara's To Paradise. Now I um, it's a hefty book which we always have have already come to expect from Hanya Yanagihara who of course shared a little life with us some years ago which was hugely acclaimed but also a little bit divisive particularly because of the last 50 pages which had quite a lot of abuse in it so i wouldn't be surprised if some of you who have read a little life would come with this book with a little trepidation i'm here to tell you please don't be afraid this book is amazing i always feel as a as a creative as an artist sometimes you've got to produce things to get to the other side and i feel that after a little life which was a, an extraordinary book in itself. To Paradise has taken Hanya Yanagihara to another level, or rather Hanya Yanagihara, her, her craft, her, her brilliance, her, her plot development, her character, her what she shares and what she doesn't is just so superb that To Paradise has to sweep the awards this year. I mean, it really does. It's extraordinary. But however, I come to this book vlog a little nervous because I'm not sure how the hell to explain it. It's almost a book beyond explanation, but I'm gonna try. Okay, so To Paradise, it is effectively in three sections. The first is set in a fictional history of the United States. So, um, we're on familiar territory, I guess, from those who have read her previous book. We're with gay men in New York. In the first part, so the first sort of section of this book, it's a fictional history where the United States was not as we know it. But New York was a city that um, <clears throat> embraced um, all kinds of sexuality, where people were free to express love and relationships as they chose to. Um, and we are with a young man who is torn between the obligation of his family history and wealth and a passionate love that he finds um, when he's volunteering at a local school. The second story is also set in a weirdly fictional but truthful time. What we are, we're in the 1990s in New York, it is the era of AIDS as we know it, but it's known as the plague in this sort of fictional parallel history. We're again with a group of gay men in New York and we begin to follow certain characters who are also straining against uh, racism, straining against uh, the legacy of their history, their family, and also what the future means for them. What does the future look like? And then we come to the third part, which is forms the bulk of the book. It's actually about half the book, which is set in a fictional future, rather perversely, given what we've gone through recently, where we're in a New York that about, I think, 2070, 2080, which has had a history of pandemics and plagues, which has decimated the population and has turned um, what's left of the United States into an authoritarian regime where the population are under coercive control and uh, their life is institutionalized to prevent further pandemics for their safety. Uh, and so you have this sort of fictional world of a very authoritarian, dictatorial life. And in there, we follow one young woman who's coming to terms with the loss of her grandfather and an unhappy, unfulfilled marriage. What on earth do those three parts have in common? Well, let me tell you, you will need to read the whole book to finally get it. And I think there's about 700 pages here. By the time I got to the end, people, I was crying. That's how good this book is. It was so moving. This book is about freedom. It is about freedom to be who you are. It is about the barriers that we have, internal and external. It is about society, how society shapes itself. It is a it is a searing indictment on uh, liberal enlightenment and how, you know the famous Martin Luther King quote that Barack Obama always quotes, which is the arc of, wait, something about the, uh, the, the line towards justice is never straight, but it bends towards, the line of progress is never straight, but it bends towards justice. I'm sorry if I've 
arcs towards justice. I'm sorry if I've misquoted that. But the idea of Martin Luther King is that there is justice, that we're on a path that is forward. Hanya challenges that profoundly. She really questions whether going forward is the same as becoming more enlightened. Why do we think that we are more enlightened than the people in the past? Why do we think that humanity will change? Why do we think that history means progress as opposed to going backwards? Why do we not think that we make the same mistakes again and again and again? Why do we think that we learn lessons from the past? We don't. And she really pulls this out. I could describe this book as a masterpiece, but I recently, I'm getting almost don't want to say that word. This book is an epic. I saw a review recently that compared it to uh, War and Peace. War and Peace is remarkably inaccessible, so I don't want people to think that. But what it means is that this book reflects every aspect of human life, decisions, our fears, the idea of loneliness, our risks to be free, um, what we're prepared to pay emotionally, uh, as well as literally to be free. Uh, what does freedom actually mean? Um, and it's different for every other person. Uh, freedom and emancipation around sexuality and around gender uh, isn't going to constantly involve. Maybe those prejudices will stay. Will we always be racist? Will we always be othering certain communities? It is, but none of that is heavy. None of that is heavy. Instead, you're in these three plots by the way, which eventually by the end, you will realize this, even though they're set over 150 years, these three plots, of course, they're all linked. And you get traces of them feeding through about how the people in it, are the weight of the history they are unaware of as people in their past made the same mistakes they did or had the same crises of confidence that they did. Uh, to Paradise is, as the book intimates from its title, it's a constant search for paradise, what people are looking for, what, what constitutes paradise. Does it constitute freedom? Does it constitute freedom to love? Or does it constitute security? Do you need physical security? Do you want to be protected from bad things? And it really investigates the nuance of that. This is not predictable, kind of like um, a simplistic. This is a really um, impressive achievement in its subtle examination of huge issues. I'm reading another book at the moment, um, which of course I will vlog about. And one of the challenges that I have is when you get a complex plot is sometimes writers do not invest in the characters as well. What I mean by that is the characters become vehicles to examine social change. And when I've just described all of that plot to you, you must think, God, this is a lot big epic. These are emotional stories. There are characters in here that drove me mad. That you just, you're sitting there, particularly in that first one set in the past, and you think, don't be so stupid. Um, and then in the middle one, you're thinking, oh no, oh, that's bad behavior. You shouldn't really do that. And that's not nice. That's not kind. Um, and then in the latter one, in this sort of post-pandemic, uh, socialised, institutionalised world, it's a, almost a horror story. Um, but, but it's the characters that bring this humanity, that bring the emotion that you're rooting for or rooting against. And that is what keeps you going through this book. I read this book in about three or four days. Um, to Paradise doesn't have the horror or the anguish in the way that a little life is. You're not going to be wincing in parts of this book. There are not going to be sections of the book you feel you can't read or that you feel are sensationalized. There's nothing like that. Um, instead, this is a hugely impressive examination of society and what it is to be human and what it is to be free. And how Hanya Yanagihara picked this vehicle of three stories in a parallel version of our world to do this. I mean, that's, that's talent because lots of people have claimed to examine human nature and human society. And she chose a parallel world, three parallel timelines. You think it's mad. Uh, and it, you, it's just so easy to slip into this world. To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara is stunning. And she was robbed of a lot of awards for a little life. I think some people were really put off by the controversy. Um, I really hope that's not the case because you, you just don't get books like this. They just don't come round. It is unique. 
it is brilliant and it deserves every single five star review and award that it must get. To Paradise by the brilliant Hanya Yanagihara.